Get a little update on the uh, solar business here, Christina. We have Chris Moran in studio with us, CEO of Solar Negotiators. Chris, nice to see you. How are you doing? Uh, good morning. Doing well. Thanks for having me. How's the business these days? Uh, things are going well. There's definitely some change happening in our industry. Uh, anyone who works in it definitely knows what I'm talking about, but um, there's there's a bright future ahead. People getting used to those changes? Uh, some are. And, you know, the utility companies don't hurt the cause when they continue to raise those rates. So yeah. Someone who had a $200 power bill five years ago is now paying 350 or 400 So um, You're the yeah. only guy happy about that. Right? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well. It sounds terrible, but that's the reality. It keeps solar companies uh, busy. Well, yeah, and you've definitely had to change the way that you do this. Yes, absolutely. Because of NEM 3.0. Yeah, that's exactly and, right. um, And so, you know, there's this... I know on your website, there's kind of this discussion of energy freedom and grid independence. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a, a big, so talk a little bit about what are the differences between these two? Because you have somebody like me that's solar, that's tired yeah. of dealing with PG&E. Yep. Then you have somebody that maybe doesn't have solar. And what does that mean to them now? Yep, absolutely. You know, historically, you could get solar on your roof and the utility grid would act as your battery. You could just send power there and kind of pull it back when you needed, get full credit, and you didn't worry too much about needing to store power on site. Uh, NEM3 changed that. So now batteries are being paired with really every system. And uh, it's important because you need to be able to store that energy and self-consume it. The difference between energy freedom and grid independence really has to do with how much of your house is backed up and has power access during an outage. And for fo some folks, they're in areas where the power doesn't go out very often. So in, in those cases, they might save some money if they are going with a project and may not opt in for the additional expense for backup for the entire house. They just use the battery solely for storage and self-consumption while the grid is on, and that's more focused on savings. Whereas some folks are tired and they want the, the appeal of having access to power for your air conditioner and every element of your home in an outage is uh, it's very strong uh, a lot of appeal for that so that's a growing demand and they don't want to deal with the you know, pg and e socalis and whoever that's exactly right exactly right but you still have to unfortunately buy your natural gas through them that is true <laughs> yeah unless <laughs> unless they find ways to start making gas in the backyard that you can burn it for for a generator right. or a furnace <laughs> maybe you can work on that over at solar negotiators yeah uh, we'll we'll put it in our r d program what are you sure. seeing a lot today though and then are you seeing a lot of people wanting to be completely grid independent and on their own or are you seeing more of I want in you know in the event that the power goes out yeah I think that most people uh, their their top priority is saving money and so a lot of them are opting simply what I would call a basic system where the you know the grid goes down and the backup capability is limited or perhaps not there at all but every single day they're they're charging the battery from the solar they're consuming it and they're minimizing how much power they're losing to the grid at lower cost or pulling from the grid at a very high cost uh, rural areas, folks with uh, residential wells or where they might be subject to f uh, power shutoffs from the fires or other factors, wind, uh, the demand there is significantly higher. Um, I'm just, what are there still a lot of subsidies? There are. The federal tax credit is still 30%, and uh, the Inflation Reduction Act two years ago extended that for 10 years. Uh, there's some other more subtle tax credits for other upgrades and such, but um, the federal government has decided they want to invest in this long term, and, and the tax credit is still there. You know, I see all these uh, stories about outages, generally when there's storms and things like yeah. that. Is that a is that a real concern, the outage? Because, you know, we heard about, you know, California. Yeah. We're the, you know, we're the outage yep. capital of the world. But are we? Is it that bad? It's one of those things where I think um, folks who've lost a home to a fire might have a different perspective than someone who's never been affected. I think there is a lot more the utility companies could do to maintain their lines and, and keep them safe uh, compared to what they are doing now instead of just cutting power for a large community for a period of time. Um, so it, it, there's kind of two sides of the aisle. I, it, it is definitely uh, growing the, the demand for battery and backup power. You know, you said something interesting at the beginning of our conversation, which is that, you know, when you're selling uh, things solar today to yep. install today, they're being sold as a package now. That's right. Because I, I'm guessing now the state of California's plan here as we move towards the goals of electric, by yep. all electric by 20, whatever, is in order to meet that demand and goal, you've got to have this battery pack on your home to be able to provide for that. That's exactly right. And, and the grid really is not prepared 
uh, to meet the demands of, of the restrictions and the goals that they have. Uh, the new policy really has incentivized a privatized investment of battery storage behind the meter uh, from citizens paying for it. So that these batteries are actually being used to stabilize the grid and minimize how much uh, power they have to ramp up these expensive power plants in the peak demand times. And so. what's the lifespan on yeah. the batteries and the panels? They've come a long way. The new chemistries are getting better and better. Um, a, a battery can last 15 plus years. I mean, it's going to lose some of its capacity for storage over time, um, but these are these are very high quality products. Uh, the panels themselves, those those will last 30 plus years and mm. continue producing. So there's a lot of longevity with this equipment. How much have you had to learn about the old grid? Uh, it's one of those constant. <laughs> yeah, I'm always learning. I try to be a student. Well, of, I mean, yeah, the there's industry. a lot of news about it, right? And yeah. we're, all, we're all worried about the grid, right? That's Can right. it handle with all the EVs and everything else that's going on? Yeah. What do, what do you know about it? Well, I think the frustration comes from there's a lot of contradiction between what the utility commission is, it, their decisions on regulation uh, against uh, the legislative goals. And a lot of times those things don't align. So it can be kind of maddening for anyone in the industry because there's constant change. And without certainty, it's difficult for businesses to plan for the long term. I mean, are you confident that the state of California is operating in the best way they could. I wish I could say that I am. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect you to say anything different. But unfortunately, I don't. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, th those who work at PG&E, their their employees feeding their families just like anyone else. And I tell you what, when when your power is out in the snow and they're the ones showing up to to restore power to your home, they're your best friend. So it, I just wish the state would do things a little smarter. You know, can you go completely grid independent and not have to deal with PG&E anymore, or do you still have to have a hookup at the house? You need a hookup. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't build a system that would allow you to go out and turn the main uh, breaker off and live grid independently you'd have to make some life changes um as far as when you use your power and it's a big investment but yeah just disconnecting completely is not really i a think a lot of people option. would love to do that they these sure days. would that's one of our biggest just requests curious, actually. that's all yeah do you, do you find a um a breaking point where people are paying a certain amount is when they decide they need to do this is there a certain amount you know per month yeah and it's different for everyone yeah. you know if if someone's been in the home long enough and they remember what their bills were 5 or 10 years ago uh, that can look very different um, and depends on people's ind individual incomes and budgets but i'd say that the uh, i would say the frustration with the utility company in general is one of the driving factors the, the way they see it is i'd rather spend my money on something i own that is going to pay me back long term than let my monthly you know, income go out. And, and power bills are not tax deductible. You have to pay your taxes and <laughs> then pay the power bill. So it becomes a much more attractive option for folks the higher the rates go. You know, I'm looking at my notes here, and this just shocked me, is that the state is looking at changes for NEM 2.0 customers yeah. that if you want to add on to your system, yep. it would trigger NEM 3? If you add more than just two modules or so, two panels, it will. Who adds two panels? Uh, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of NEM2 customers who've been waiting for this information. I can give a little clarification. They finally released some options that allow uh, you to add solar without triggering NEM2. Like for your house, Christina, we would we would pull all your electrical breakers out, add some batteries and some additional uh, solar, but that solar system can never export to the grid. That's the key. So your existing wow. system would still be able to produce and send power to the grid, but the new system would not be able to. It would essentially be there solely for the purpose of powering on-site loads. Wow. Yeah, that, uh, there's a lot of folks who have been eagerly waiting for this, and so we expect demand to pick up because uh, this, this decision was finalized very, very recently. What are some of the questions, the popular questions you get asked a lot? Oh, my goodness. Are batteries worth it? That is kind of the big one, right? Well, and what's the pricing on them, too? They were really expensive. I know they you've were. talked over the years how it's come down. Yeah, it has. And the tax credit applies to batteries as well. So the government's covering a big chunk uh, of the cost. Uh, for someone who is, again, under NIM 3 solar doesn't make sense without batteries. Uh, for someone who's under NIM 2 uh, purchasing a battery just to have it, unless you really need that backup power, is not going to generate quite as much savings because you can still just push all that power straight to the grid. Um, that is the most common question that we get. Uh, another one is, what am I going to do when I need to re-roof my house? 
I got solar 10 years ago, and, and uh, now I, my, the other side of my house is leaking. What do I do? And that, there's a process for that. So it's just it's, – it's, you've got these expensive systems on, on homes, and folks want to make sure they're taken care of because it was a big investment. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you, you know, I'm just, I was just thinking, uh, is there an uh, average home size that you do? I would say an average home size is, is, is about 2,000 square feet. 2,000 square yeah. feet. And so what, what do you need? What, what kind of bill would I need sure. in, a two, in that house yeah. to justify doing this, the expense? If you plan to live in the house more than five years, then any bill average above $250 is going to have a positive payback. If you plan to move, um, then the investment may not make sense. And that's kind of been the story for solar all along. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna move two years from now, there's no point in making that investment. But if you're gonna be there for a while, it's gonna pay for itself. Yeah, because times. Uh, like I say, there's subsidies, but yeah. you've got to pay for the system. That's exactly that, right. That's not paid by the subsidy. Yes. And you're um, if you're still connected to the to the grid, you're still gonna have some kind of PG and E bill, right? Because yes. part of that bill is maintaining the system, not necessarily the energy you use. That's right. right. Minimum you know. bills are still a big thing, and that's really where they're focused next is trying to get uh, the monthly minimums uh, increased, and then they still get their money. Is that why? Wow, <laughs> it's, it's it's a just, big part of it. The, the, so the, you're trying to get people to get on solar, and now they're kind of punishing people who get on solar. There is there are many people who have that position. Yes. <laughs> well, they did such a good job of selling, uh, you know, Californians on solar. Yeah. And really, solar is great. Look, the sun that we have here, yeah. it really, I mean, it does work. But they did too good of a job. They, in some ways, they did, and a lot of other states are following California's uh, model. So. Very interesting. Yeah. All right, Chris, anything else you want to add before we say goodbye? Like how to get a hold of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah good one. We're local. You can reach us at uh, 447-1557. Happy to help you out. A lot of good companies in the area that would also love to help you out. But uh, we we appreciate uh, the business from the community, and, and we're here to help. Online at? Uh, yeah, solarnegotiators.com. There you go. Easy. Yeah. Pretty simple like that. Yep. And I'll tell you, Chris put in my system, he saved my butt, is what he did. Because <laughs> he talks about the roof and, and uh, right, I had a system yeah. that was installed improperly by somebody yeah. and caused a huge leak in the roof. Yeah. And uh, he had to take it all off and fix it and put it back on. And glad we he got saved that our butts. <laughs> thanks. We're glad to help. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, guys. SolarNegotiators.com.